it's working. Is it working? If children are engaged, they are learning, their brains are actually growing when they're in that state of deep, deep involvement. Instead of rushing these children through their levels and through targets and through stages of development, we actually believe that children do develop in, at their own pace and in their own unique way, and we just want to facilitate that and support it. <laughs> what we're trying to do is let the children pursue their own interests and curiosities and the work that they're doing is very ambitious and quite sophisticated. We've provided an environment where every child can get involved in whatever it is that interests them and then the adults will join them in their pursuits and try and move their learning forward. They self-register by moving a name card to a number line so that, that we know they're in and then it's it is truly child initiated learning because when they can choose to go inside or outside they can choose the resources they're going to use they can choose what to do with those resources and they can choose how long they will pursue something for just by adding resources like this that are accessible and always accessible the children know that when they arrive every day they will be able to do what they plan to do they know that the it pretty much doesn't change, it's, it's high quality all the time. So they know if they come in and they want to make something that the resources will be there and the adults will be there. There's never going to be an area that's shut off and that they can't use. So there's nothing in the cupboards, everything is out, everything is being used. So can you draw your house, we're going to do a plan of what you're going to make. It hasn't got any stairs. That's fine. You draw your, your house and we'll draw plan, your flat. But in each case, the adults are around to maybe give the vocabulary or show them how to use resources or just give them a bit of moral support if that's what they need to keep going. So now we need to think about what, what pieces of wood we need, what shapes we need to make your house. We need this shape. Should we go and have a look? Yeah. Bring your plan. This shape. Okay, which part would that be? And that's teaching in its best sense in the early years. Yeah. How, how do you want it to be? time the children are playing is the time they're learning and the adults are teaching and that's all day every day from the minute they arrive. A running story? What do you want to run running story? Okay, what do you need to get there? A lot of people talk about child initiated learning but actually the, the adults are giving them say three or four choices but here I would say they've got maybe thousands, thousands of choices. So the child that's fascinated by words and writing will be drawing and writing. What do you notice about the Z letter? You see the I'm playing. It's not the same. It's not the same. So what do we need to do? When we do it next time, we have to go across that way first. And then down and then across again. Do you want to practice that now? Write it again. When I see children here just going off and writing because they really want to write a story or they want to write a shopping list, that's such a different feel to children writing a sentence because it's the literacy there and that's what they've got to do. Um, we've seen that this morning, a child making up a game with written words, etc. Has anybody got names? Do you like Um, doing names. Has anybody got names? Set out. Seen here by five past nine, we had 90 children engaged and learning. There was no waiting around, they were just in and off straight away learning. Oh, I think you put it out. It disappeared from earlier. We put four on there, didn't we? You put it on? We had so many sales and they all disappeared. Oh, they're there. That's, that's some new ones. The adults are looking for those moments when they can make a difference. So I think it's quite striking if I visit other settings where maybe adults are watching children, but here you'll see the adults interacting with the children all the time. Every single moment is a teachable moment. Um, so they're looking 
all the time, where can I make a difference? What can I add to this? Um, so that they're allowing them or supporting the children to make progress in uh, every second. We found a lot of nails so far. So far, so good. This is a wood knife. Do you want to hold it? It tickles a little bit. I'll hold it. <laughs> He's not going to hurt you because he hasn't got very big teeth. Okay. And then some of that is recorded afterwards. So the paperwork is kept to a minimum. The teacher's knowledge of the children, because they work in this way, they know the children in great depth and in great detail. And so we focus on three children in each class each week to record their learning, just so that each term we've got a record for each child of their week. We call it their learning journey for that week. And this is a cake. Okay. Some people have got really good memories and at the end of the day they can still remember what they did in the morning. Other people tend to finish an interaction with one of these focused children, we call them, and then they would go and write it up straight away. We also might record something, if a whole group of children get involved doing something together and there's some quite powerful learning, that would be recorded. Um, and then the, the other thing that we call, record is if we see a child doing something independently for the first time, which is really amazing, we call it a, a wow moment, we would record those and keep them in their file. So this is a really simple example. Adonna's on the climbing frame and got to the highest point and was a little unsure how to get down. Teacher talked Adonna through the process and reassured her. And then after she was able to do this independently. So you've got the initial observation, the child not confident to do something, the teaching which was encouraging and talking through the process and then the outcome which was that she did it independently. You'll hear a lot of people talking about, a, they'll think of a learning objective and then they'll plan activities to, for the children to achieve that objective. Whereas we are trying to work with the children's interests and then we will check which bit of the curriculum we've covered through that activity. So the little boy, for example, has just been to the fire engine, fire station. Um, so through the day, he's covered creative development because he's made things. He's also covered uh, knowledge and understanding by combining materials to make those things. Personal and social, he's had the ideas, he's talked about it, he's gone, had a new experience. Um, physical development, he's had to cut things. So without us um, planning, he has actually covered the whole curriculum. Um, he's now doing some writing because he's writing to a real firefighter to come and visit. So rather than thinking right, we're gonna the objective for that child is to write a sentence, it's let's see what his interest is and see what learning we can bring into that. Who did you write to? Do you remember? Uh, Razio, that's right. It says I wonder what he'll bring. I don't know. I don't know either. Have you written a letter too, Daniel? Hello. They're too big. Your lights are too big. So what should we do then? They're too big. We need to make another. We're gonna make some more. We can cut it, make it a little bit smaller. There is a statistic that an early years practitioner has about 1,000 interactions per day. Um, if, if you have an interaction with a child, move the child's learning on and then walk away and try and write that down, the number of interactions in a day will reduce to probably below 100. So for us it's a direct choice. Are we going to interact with the children and move their learning on 1,000 times a day or are we going to write 100 interactions down? The main comment is always how calm the children are, and that's back to this level of involvement. Are they involved? This, um, and if they're involved, then we know that they're learning. It's, it is right, the children are happy, they're not stressed, and I think that's probably one of the biggest barriers to learning, is stress on children. And equally, the staff are not stressed. They, they love their job again. You know, um, a lot of teachers in England are under such huge pressures to, to get to targets. 
Um, whereas these adults, they're coming in and they're enjoying interacting with the children every day and getting the results, so it's a win-win. This looks very interesting, Adonna. One of the things that we do a lot is story scribing. So today, Ron has made a house um, and then the she wanted to write a story about the house, so that would have become a shared writing process. The teacher would have done most of the writing, but because she knows Ron as, she would have got Ron as to do little bits within the story that she was capable of. And then at the end of each day, at the end of each morning and the end of each afternoon, the classes come together and they will share things that have happened during the morning or during the afternoon. You worked so hard on that. Okay, and we need this full story. <coughs> So in this case, Ronas has got her little house and she's acting out the story that she's written earlier in the day. Once upon a time, there was a Superman. Superman roared. And Minnie Mouse goes in her house. How is she going to do it? She closed the curtains. And then she closed the door. We genuinely believe that children want to learn and that's innate and it's natural in them when they're born and I don't think that changes when they come to school. When children are deeply involved, they are learning, their brain is actually growing in that moment and children that are sitting quietly on the carpet bored, they have scanned, actually scanned those children's brains and they've almost gone out, they are, they're not learning at that moment. You know, there's libraries full of research about the brain and play and um, the best way for young children to learn and all the evidence shows that if a child's attitude at this age is good then they will achieve well when they're older and here come the children. <laughs>